Thank you for joining today's webinar, Lessons Learned in a Pandemic Reality, hosted by VoIP First Media, your go-to resource for making informed VoIP decisions. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. Please don't be shy. This webinar will be recorded and posted to the VoIPFirstMedia.com website following today's session. Please note you may adjust your screen by clicking on the icon on the lower right-hand side of your screen. I'd like to welcome our speakers today, Todd Catlett, Regional Partner Leader at Rackspace Technology, and Colin Johnston, Executive Vice President, Strategic Channels at Star to Star. Thank you both for joining us today. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. We're excited to share a little bit of information with you and, and get a little insight and, and share some of the things we've learned during this pandemic reality. My name is Todd Catlett, and I'm the regional partner leader in the Southeast United States for Rackspace Technology. And uh, I'm not going to PowerPoint you to death. I'm going to share a couple of things with you, though, just so you understand, you know, my experience and what I've seen during this pandemic. So Rackspace is a uh, NASDAQ traded company. Uh, we're about 8,000 employees, over half are engineers, 22-year uh, business. And uh, one of the things that I point out in this slide is our headquarters in San Antonio, Texas, is a former defunct shopping mall that we bought. It's 1.2 million square feet. Um, we've turned it into an incredibly cool facility. It's very Google-esque, if you will. Um, you know, it's got a food court and a daycare center and gym and, and everything you could want. And it sits empty because of the pandemic. Uh, our 3,500 employees are working from home for the last 15 months, the ones that are headquartered there. And I wanted to quickly share this with you too. Uh, this is from uh, uh, about six weeks ago on CNBC. And it's really just to give you a little background about us. Rackspace is a leading end-to-end -end multi cloud tech services company. We design, build, and operate customers' cloud environments across all the major tech platforms, being AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and Private Cloud. And we have a saying around Rackspace that uh, we're very fond of that the cloud is for everyone, but not everything. And this is so true um, because uh, you know everyone is different. And again, applications perform different in, in all of the different clouds. And so uh, one of the other things, just for me, uh, you know, to know who we are and a kind of a credibility, we're in the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Uh, I think this is our fifth year. We're in the upper right quadrant. We're also in the Forrester Wave, and we're a best place to work. And so um, I wanted to just kind of give you a little background. It's not a sales pitch, but wanted to share with you, again, my experiences that I've been seeing, um, you know, through the pandemic. So I work with channel partners throughout the Southeast United States. And, uh, you know, they're engaged in everywhere from Fortune 100 companies to SMB. And we currently have about 125,000 uh, clients and, and customers around the globe. And so they range in, in size, again, from small to large. And so we've got over for half the Fortune 500. So we probably got somewhere around 110,000, what I would call kind of mid-market accounts. And these are all brought to us through our channel partners. And so over the last year, what's been very unique and, and different for all of us is you know, we've seen how people are adapting to uh, the environment and, and being forced to, right, to make quick changes to their business. Again, a lot of it's simply about survival, right? Um, you couldn't have people in the office or forced to work from home. So first thing people had to do was get connected. Uh, unified communications played a huge part in that, right? Because you've got all these workers distributed that used to be in a single location or maybe a couple of locations. So, you know, you've got workers trying to be productive from home and, uh, and bring it into your network. And what it's done is introduced a lot of security problems for companies because people typically had a kind of a castle mentality, right? You had a moat around it and you secured the outside and you didn't let any bad players in or you tried to prohibit that, right? Now you've sent everyone out into the world and you've got all these endpoints that are exposed and you've got people working from home where you've got children doing classwork. Um, you've got you know spouses there that may be having to work from home as well. And so you're introducing all of these, uh, you know, uh, again, security holes throughout your entire environment. And, um, you know, this is, again, creates great complexity for the for the IT departments, for the businesses. How do you stop this? How do you get to a zero trust environment with multi-factor authentication, no matter what people are, are using uh, as a device, right, to get into the network to be able to produce? And what I have seen is companies have actually been more productive. Uh, in a work from home environment. This has been my experience. I know we are. We're about 25% more productive uh, with a lot less expense in travel, clearly. Um, 
but I think the quality of life has improved for a lot of people. And I read an article a few weeks ago uh, on Robert Half Technology that one in three remote workers would quit their job if they were forced to go back to the office. And I believe that because, again, people have had this experience now and they find that, you know, they don't want to commute for an hour, two hours, three hours. I used to commute three hours a day, 90 minutes each way. And people don't want to do that, right? They're having a better quality of life. They're able to be more productive. They start work earlier and they typically end up working later. And so, uh, again, I think companies are realizing across the board that they're never going to be the same that they were prior to this pandemic, right? They're going to uh, allow people to be flexible in their schedule. I know we are. Again, we've got 3,500 people that sit in one location. We're going to start bringing them back uh, next month in small waves. But the company is already uh, authorizing people to uh, work from home, to have a more flexible environment. And I think that, you know, overall, we're going to see this across the board, where you're going to see large corporate headquarters be decreased in size significantly, um, again, to adapt and keep people. Because, you know, again, if uh, the stats are that that many folks would leave their job, it would be a tough uh, Tough thing to try to replace and find all of these quality workers, right, to keep them. So you want to keep employees happy, number one, and you want to secure your environments, which is a huge problem. The solar winds event that happened last December um, that actually originated in September of 2019 um, has affected, you know, over 18,000 businesses to date and, you know, large portions of the government as well. And we don't even know the full extent of this to date um, because the Russian hackers were so sophisticated, they were able to erase their code. To, to you know for the tracks that they would normally leave in some type of attack like this and so you know we're going to see uh, ripple effects uh, continue uh, just the other day the colonial pipe uh, cyber attack uh, you know gives evidence that you know clearly uh, no company is uh, you know free from uh, you know are going to be able to avoid these types of things and so companies have to reevaluate the await their their IT infrastructure how they support their they're remote workers and it brings on a lot of challenges. And, you know, again, we've experienced this. We've helped a lot of companies to to manage to get through this. And we've uh, also, again, you know, adopted and adapted internally uh, for our own people to, uh, to again, to make it just a, a good, wholesome work environment. We've been very concerned about the health of all the employees, which I'm sure many of you are as well. How do you keep people safe? Well, you know, a big concern for companies and also, you know, uh, America being as litigious as it is, you know, that can create problems for large organizations. And so, you know, we have been uh, kind of a employees first, health first uh, mentality as we've gone through this. And uh, just again, we're uh, we're being very proactive in our approach to it. And I think it's worked out very well for us individually and the companies that we've been helping. Again, uh, going through all of the same things, right? We're helping them to to morph and to adjust and adapt rather quickly uh, to these things because, again, a lot of businesses may not be able to survive what's happened. I think now we're getting closer to uh, some semblance of normalcy uh, where travel will begin to pick up. Uh, we've seen that in the news. Um, I was on my first flight 15 months a week ago, and on the uh, return from Boston, the plane was completely filled. On the way up, it only had half, uh, you know, half the load of people. But again, the, uh, the environment is uh, here to stay. And so everyone has to address it, you know, according to, you know, their business needs and requirements, right? And the outcomes they're trying to achieve organizationally, right? I mean, every business is out there to make a profit. And, and how do you do that during uh, times like this? And so, um, again, I just wanted to share a little bit of insight. And I want to give my uh, friend Colin here a little chance to chat with you as well. And I know we've got some questions for the group as and uh, as we move through this because we'd like to make it interactive and hear some of your experiences and the things that people are doing. So, Colin, let me hand it over to you, my friend, and let you share for a few minutes. Great, great. Thanks, Todd. It's uh, your your tough act to follow. So, I wanted to, um, you know, it's it's not just about you know obviously the company and 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 what uh, we're obviously delivering, but it's having the correct tools uh, to be able to function in this uh, new normal. Uh, in this new type of situation. But uh, as Todd said, this isn't really a, an infomercial, but wanted to give you a little bit of background about Star to Star. So um, we have uh, not quite as many folks uh, as as Rackspace does, but we do have about 600 uh, folks. Uh, we're a global company uh, delivering solutions uh, globally, uh, about $200 million in revenue, a uh, 1,000, 100,000 customers uh, globally, uh, which equates to about two and a half million, what we would term uh, in the UCAS world as seats. Um, 
Our uh, network operations center in uh, in North America, uh, we have multiple data centers where we deliver uh, our solutions, Chicago, Dallas, New York, McLean, Virginia, uh, Los Angeles, and San Jose. Uh, and why that's important uh, as far as understanding delivering voice over IP at certain locations, uh, this entire network is, I'd say, you know, the best way to describe it, it's almost like a living, breathing network. Uh, whereas if there's any issues at any one of these different data centers, uh, our solution will automatically fail over all of the calls and all of the uh, traffic to a different data center and so on. So uh, it's a very robust network that allows that. But, um, you know, and as we talk about the different applications that everybody, you know, obviously works with today, um, obviously there's voice. Uh, but things are so far beyond voice uh, at this point. Uh, you know, I, I've been selling and involved in communications since I was uh, about 19 years old with a, a voicemail manufacturer here in, in Sarasota, Florida. Um, and, you know, obviously voice is a big part of what we do, but it's becoming less and less of what we do. Uh, when you think of collaboration, video, conferencing, uh, text messaging, uh, you know, even fax, um, you know, I think we all thought fax was going to be gone by now, but, you know, having a fax solution, delivering it, you know, directly to your desktop uh, and just being able to do that uh, no matter where you're located. Um, as you can see, Todd and I are both, uh, you know, working from home. Um, we have a little video that we're going to show, I think, after this uh, presentation that I did a year ago uh, when COVID really kind of hit to begin with. Uh, and the thing is, is what, you know, I think a lot of people thought we'd all be back to work and back in the offices by now. And as Todd said, you know, they have a wave of people that are going to be coming back to their offices. Um, but one of the things that's pretty unique about, I think, a lot of companies and maybe maybe not unique uh, to a lot of companies, but what Star to Star is doing is we're really taking our office space, uh, which is about 77,000 square feet, uh, reducing it to about 40,000 square feet. Um, because I really think, you know, it's almost been the world's largest proof of concept that people can work from home, be successful, be productive. Uh, to Todd's point, um, you know, 94% uh, of business owners uh, have found that, you know, their, their workers are either as productive or more productive, you know, working remotely. Um, so, you know, the way we work, you know, today has changed. And I don't think it's going back to what it was. And I know that from our own standpoint, physically, it's not going back to the same, uh, you know, office space that we had before. But uh, and video, obviously, we're doing a video meeting like, you know, right now, uh, conferencing, whether that's video conferencing or, or, or you know, voice conferencing. Uh, and then the biggest thing is collaboration. How are you going to collaborate, not with just your customers uh, that you're working with, but also your, your fellow employees? I mean, we do tend to feel like we're a little bit enclosed, you know, working in a remote type of environment like this. So I think it's extremely important uh, to be able to collaborate and, and get on video meetings and things of that nature with not only your customers, but also, uh, you know, other employees in, in the business. Um, you know, messaging, text messaging, SMS messaging, um, you know, if you read enough of the articles, you know, they say that the email is dying. Uh, and I really believe it because most text messages, you know, are answered within seconds as opposed to emails that, you know, might be answered at some point throughout the day. So uh, big difference as far as how we work today. So um, also business continuity. I mean, you know, as really what we're talking about here is really kind of a digital transformation, right? Um, in, in the fact that where companies were starting to go and where they were starting to direct their, you know, their efforts. Uh, but there's still a lot of things that we want to be able to keep, say, from a traditional UCAS standpoint. But, you know, find me, follow me. Um, if I'm working at home, I want to be able to, if someone calls me, it rings my desk phone. If I have a desk phone here in my office at home, uh, it rings my desk phone in the office, wherever, you know, if I'm working in the office, uh, it also will ring my iPhone. Uh, and wherever I happen to be, I answer that call. So it really doesn't matter anymore where you're located. It's do you have the right tools, as I said earlier, you know, to be able to actually communicate. Um, but, you know, as we look, you know, obviously soft phones, um, you know, soft phones have become a big part of, of our application. Uh, and that's a soft phone on a PC or a Mac wherever you're working. Um, I couldn't tell you the number of, of calls I've had with folks in the last, you know, few months uh, where they're on a laptop in a Starbucks or in a Panera uh, with their headset on and so on. And, you know, it's just kind of, again, I, I hate to say it because it's cliche, but it's really the new normal. We have to be able to communicate this way and have the right tools, you know, to be able to do it. And obviously soft phones is a big part of that. Uh, a lot of companies, what we were seeing even uh, pre-pandemic, uh, were actually opting to go all soft phone uh, in their organizations. And I'm not talking small organizations, you know, four, five, six hundred phones in a single building, a single organization with not a single desk phone anywhere in the organization, everything being a soft phone. Um, you know, so in that aspect, you know, they're prepared 
if there's a disaster, everybody can go home and take their laptops with them. If there's an issue, you know, snow days, we don't get too many snow days down here in Florida, but, you know, obviously up north, that's an issue and so on. Uh, but then also things like mass notification text messaging for those types of things. You know, hey, the office is closed today. Uh, we want to be able to send that information out to all of our employees, all with a touch of a button and things of that nature. So um, another part of our, our uh, solution with Star to Star is Contact Center. Um, you know, it's really all about collecting the appropriate amount of data. You know, how many calls were received, how many calls were abandoned, uh, inbound, outbound calling, how busy am I? Do I need to add another agent? Do I have a sales group? Do I have a tech support group? Uh, and obviously a contact center will do that, you know, for your organization as well. Um, and as far as securing um, all of this information, this really uh, dovetails directly with what Todd was saying, you know, with Rackspace, um, you know, how am I going to secure all of my data? And one of the things that Star to Star does is we work with Citrix. Um, this is one of the coolest things I think I can say on the whole, uh, you know, presentation today, but we are the only UCAS uh, company in the world uh, that is what's known as Citrix certified, which allows our uh, service, our soft phone and all of our applications to work right within the Citrix environment, uh, fully encrypted, no matter where you're located, uh, you could be on a, on a, you know, just a, a very basic PC. You could be on a tablet. You could be on your phone, your iPhone, your Droid. Uh, everything is secure. Uh, there's no data that needs to reside on that laptop. It's all in the cloud. Um, so very similar to to what Rackspace does. But I, I like to say it's a, a different, you know, same dance, different leg action. We do it a little bit differently than than, than Rackspace does. Um, and then also, you know, who's going to support you uh, in this endeavor? Um, because support is extremely important, particularly now with all the different types of applications. Uh, like I said, it's not just about voice. It's not just about being able to make a phone call, um, voice, video, chat, collaboration, and so on. Uh, and Star to Star, we do run 24-7. Um, you know, our tech support as far as all of our customers and our, and our partners and our distributors. Um, you know, one of the, the neat things with Star to Star is if you do have a Star to Star phone system, you can literally go to the phone and just hit Star to Star, and it brings you right into our tech support group. So that's how available we want to be to you to be able to make sure that you know you're obviously functioning appropriately so um you know karen i, I know we uh i think we had a little video we were going to show which is uh sorry guys you're going to hear my voice again for another two minutes but uh this was a video that i had put together about a year ago uh right at the beginning of the pandemic and what we'll do is we'll watch the video and we'll translate to see if there's anything that's changed a year later uh so karen i don't know if you could uh go ahead and run that video that'd be great Hi everyone, um, this is Colin with Star to Star and uh, I just wanted to do a quick video uh, in reference to COVID-19. Um, obviously, first of all, I hope everyone is staying safe, um, keeping yourself safe, keeping your family safe. Um, obviously the most important thing right now for everyone. Um, but as you can see, um, I find myself working from home like millions of other uh, people are today. And uh, you know, I was going to clean up this area and make it look like my office space. Um, but in reality, I don't have an office space in my house. Uh, my office space was turned into a bedroom about six months ago. Uh, but I started thinking about this, and really, wherever you find yourself, as long as you have the right tools, uh, you can really work from anywhere. Um, and obviously, Star to Star has a few of those tools to help you. Um, things like, you know, something as simple as a uh, poly headset, which has noise canceling in it. Uh, I'm sure several of us have experienced children being home uh, for spring break, uh, dogs barking, uh, and so on. And, and trust me, when you're on a conference call with somebody and they hear that in the background, they're experiencing the exact same thing right now as well. But, uh, you know, a poly headset's great, you know, for that as far as noise canceling. Uh, then also things like Find Me, Follow Me, um, a feature that has been built into the Star to Star system since inception. But a phone call will ring my desk, will ring my laptop. Uh, will ring the soft phone in my iPhone uh, and basically allows the person to find me wherever I happen to be. So uh, a big part of, of what we do. Um, also our star scope, um, we can see who's in the office, who's on the phone. Uh, we can make calls directly through, almost like an intercom call directly through to somebody. Because one of the things you're gonna wanna do is stay in contact with your coworkers uh, when you're working in, a, in an isolated type situation at home. Uh, and to that point as well, um, it may be due to the isolation or, or not, but one of the things that uh, I've really enjoyed uh, using over the last week is our video chat, uh, Star Video, uh, which has document sharing and so on. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you have the right tools, uh, if you have the right mindset, you know, pick a place in your home that you can work from and that's your place, whether it's your office or a place like I've chosen here uh, in, uh, in a room in my house. 
And again, uh, if you've got questions, uh, please message me below. I'd like to hear uh, your comments and, and your concerns and how things are going for you while you're working at home. Uh, and again, I hope everybody stays safe and uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks very much. Okay, well, I don't know if I was uh, uh, heavier then or, or thinner then. I was trying to figure out, you know, a year ago if I've gained any weight or, or, or lost any weight with all this that's going on. But, um, you know, I've kind of monopolized a little bit of the time here, Todd. Did you did you have any comments on on what we just talked about there that uh, kind of dovetails with what obviously Rackspace is doing? No, you know, the absolutely having the tools, right? And so for myself, you know, I've been a remote worker for about 11 years. And so, you know, for me, the adoption was simple. Um, and, and thank God my children are out of the house because I have met more kids over the last year and dogs and cats uh, than I ever had. Right. Uh, and people working in much more challenging environments. But so while it was normal for me and I'm used to it in, in traveling and you and I used to travel a lot, Colin, and I haven't traveled. It's been a little more strenuous. Right. View, doing video meetings all day long can be a real drain. Right. You're trying to be up and on and communicate with people and, you know, collaboration, I thought was something that would, would really be challenged during this. Right. But I got to tell you, you know, I'm on meetings with 11, 12, 13 people. Um, and we're all, you know, we're using teams internally. Now uh, we use zoom a lot, but we've been migrating over to teams and, you know, the chat session that is incredibly helpful. Right. And we're sharing information in real time when we're on with a prospect or a partner and, um, you know, so I found that the collaboration is still very, very good. And while I do miss uh, times when I would go to the office and you have the water cooler chit chat, right, and the ability to hang out and the camaraderie you get with, you know, with coworkers, you know, that I think is is tough for everyone, right? Because I think most people truly enjoy that. Um, but again, you, you adjust, right? And I think that companies are going to be much more flexible and allow people to have that come and go kind of aspect. And where they have pods where you don't have an assigned desk, right? You show up and you do your work and uh, you know, you go on about your business. And again, I think as long as you're productive and the company doesn't, uh, you know, see that drop off, um, you know, it's it's positive for everyone. Right. Um, I know that I hated the commute when I used to have to do it. And so, uh, again, I, I miss not traveling. However, I find myself to be, you know, working a little bit longer hours and uh, using uh, more tools but collaborating really uh, very, very extensively and, uh, and working well. And so for us, you know, again, we've been more productive. Our revenues have increased. And um, I know we have a lot of uh, really happy employees that used to hate to have to go into the office. Again, we have a, a, no a large number of people globally that are remote. But, you know, in our offices corporately around the planet, we probably have 5,000 people that are in offices. And so maybe yeah. a couple thousand that were remote. And so, yeah. uh, again, I, everyone has adjusted uh, rather quickly, I might add, too. And I know some businesses have struggled with it. And there's a lot of companies, you know, they want to see their workers, right? They want to see them there. But again, if you're not dropping off in your productivity, what does it really matter, right? And I think the happier the employee, the greater the work that's produced. Sure. Hey, um, you know, Karen, I, I think we had some poll questions. I mean, we uh, we don't want everyone to just uh, sit there and listen to us. So a little okay. audience participation. I, I think maybe we had an initial poll question we wanted to throw up. So uh, uh, which is, uh, is working from home now permanent? Um, so if, uh, if everybody that's in a, attendance could, uh, could answer there, then we'll, we'll kind of take it from there. I think we'll give it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe about 30 seconds here. So it, it, it almost looks like one of those races, which one's going to win. <laughs> okay. So, I, I mean, what I find when we do these poll questions, they, you know, once you get into it, they don't change too much from, from the beginning or maybe from a little bit into it to the end there. So a lot of people are saying, not sure. Um, obviously, you know, some, some no's and some, and some yeses. And, and I think that's probably a valid response is saying, not sure. Um, I think there's a lot of, um, you know, unsurety in the, in the space right now. Um, but again, you know, depending on your organization, um, you know, if you decide to go back into the office, um, I think the office is going to look a little bit different than it did in the past. Um, I was actually talking to, to Todd uh, yesterday and I was reading an article about uh, in New York City. Um, you know, I mean, the biggest loser right now in this whole pandemic or one of the largest, you know, uh, say loser, I wouldn't, that's maybe too harsh a term, but is commercial real estate. Um, you know, the, 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 do we need these big, you know, uh, marble and glass, you know, uh, offices, uh, any longer? So, 
Um, you know, and in that case, I think it's the first time probably in my lifetime that rents in New York City are actually down, uh, you know, and, and, and falling a little bit. So, um, and I think the right answer here really is that some people will have permanent workers from this point forward. Uh, and then some folks will try to go, you know, back to the office and, and maybe some sort of normal aspect of, of how they, uh, they used to work. But um, kind of like I was saying in the video and what we said through this process, um, it really doesn't matter where you work, as long as you have the tools to be productive, uh, as long as your data is secured with, you know, like a company like Rackspace, or you're being able to make communications and collaborate with with your coworkers and, and customers uh, with a product like from star to star. But uh, what do you think, Todd? I mean, obviously, this is but, kind of our know, first this, question. The poll but... is, is indicative here of really, I think, reality, right? You've got a bunch of yeses and, and a bunch of not sure because there's it's going to be different. Um, clearly, the no's were, it looks like here, you know, when you combine the other two at the, at the lesser end. And so I agree, you know, again, having the right tools is, makes all the difference in the world. And a lot of companies didn't have the tools, right? All of a sudden, this was thrust upon them rather quickly. I can remember my last trip was uh, February 6th of uh, 2020 and got back and uh, we had the IT Expo in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And, and that was it. And I was like, well, what do you mean we're not allowed to travel? You know, how do I go see my partners? That's how I do business. And they're like, well, figure it out. Right. You know, and so um, that's exactly what I did. And, and again, we incorporated some new tools to help facilitate that and to just try not to miss a beat. Right. Um, and again, someone who's, you know, like myself and Colin that have been doing business travel for 25 years. You know, I miss being on the road and doing the things that we did in the events and seeing the partners. Um, and I look forward to those days again. But I realized that, you know, we will probably do less of it. Um, yeah. And as an organization, while we're, we're still more productive than we were, I know the expenses have come down on that. And I know that finance looks at that and the CFO and says, well, maybe we don't need to do it as much. And so mm -hmm. I'm sure that we'll have stricter guidelines around travel uh, going forward. But uh, again, it doesn't matter where you're at, right? Yep. You could be on the beach, you could be at home, you can be in a corporate office. And I think as long as the results are there, let the people be happy, right? Yeah. I mean, I actually ha have a very uh, uh, personal you know, story as it relates to COVID, but um, and, and I'll just touch on that briefly. But, you know, this is kind of where we're at, um, you know, in 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 uh, in the scheme of things. But um, I hadn't traveled for a year. Um, similar, like, as you said, Todd hadn't traveled. Um, I took one business trip uh, about a month ago, uh, maybe a month and a half ago. Uh, first business trip, I was trying to be good. And um, I actually did you know, get COVID on that, I believe on that trip, uh, came back to Sarasota, Florida and fairly healthy, no underlying conditions, not an issue uh, as far as that goes. Uh, I actually ended up in the hospital for over a week uh, with double pneumonia and COVID, um, you know, very, very, you know, uh, affected me very, very badly. Um, so I think that's the thing that employees are concerned of as well. Um, you know, how are we going to do this? Are we going to be forced to travel? You know, is everybody going to get vaccinated uh, and so on? So um, there's just a lot of questions, I think, right now. And that's why I think a lot of the unsure uh, answers are, are actually valid, um, because I think it's, you know, we're going to see how this all plays out. But uh, Karen, is there another uh, question um, that we can go to? <laughs> I think we kind of covered this enough, yeah, but yeah. let's see what everybody thinks. <laughs> This is interesting. I'm, 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 I'm curious to see uh, what everyone else out there thinks. Yep. Maybe what we should have said is before this presentation, <laughs> did you think that, that were, uh, employees were more productive yeah. or not? Yeah, it's but, just yeah, a I mean, different world, right? You know, companies, yep. again, you know, you want people to get vaccinated, right? I think it's the right thing to do for society, but you've got a lot of people that are resistant to it. And, uh, you know, I don't see, you know, I've read some articles where companies are going to force their employees, and I don't know that that's the right answer either. Um, I think just as, you know, again, being good citizens, that everyone should do it, right? We want to get to this herd immunity, and I believe that it's probably something we're going to have to do on an annual basis. But I know I have, I've had both of my Moderna shots. Um, I have my passport and, you know, I wanted to be prepared to travel again, I'll be honest. And while I had COVID, my wife was a hospital worker, uh, 28 years at the Cleveland Clinic, and you know, she worked on the COVID floor. And, you know, I thought for sure we'd get it. And, you know, finally we did, um, but we didn't really have a big impact from it. Um, and so I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't get the, you know, the, the vaccination. But then in reality set in, I was like, well, you know what? I think in order to travel, I'm probably going to have to have this. 
I had all my other vaccinations growing up, like probably most everyone else here did, right? Measles, you know, polio, all of those things you had to get. And, uh, you know, I believe in the science. And so I, I was uh, all about just getting it done. And, and like I said, just kind of moving forward as a society and trying to get back to what we, you know, would consider somewhat normal. So it looks like we got our answer here that people do believe yep. that you're more productive. Yep. Sorry, I was on. I was on mute. I was talking to myself yeah. here. Um, <laughs> you know, I sat on a panel uh, about six months ago or seven months ago uh, with um, a group of folks, and one of the things that uh, was very apparent uh, when we were on this panel and talking about it is people are more productive working at home, but there's also not that kind of demark point of when you go into the office and you come home from the office, you know, you have that break point in your work day, you come home and, and then kind of start your home life where when you're working at home the entire time, just as Todd said, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll turn around and I'll look and I'll be, oh my goodness, it's 7.30, it's eight o'clock, you know, wife's, you know, knocking on the door, hey, you're going to come have dinner with us and, and so on. So um, I think it's also important that workers set parameters, um, you know, because you do have to have some sort of balance between your work and, and your home life. Um, but, you know, the productivity, uh, you know, there was a, it was a company called Mercer, which was an HR um, a company, nationwide HR company, uh, did a survey and 94% of their uh, employers said that, you know, their employees were either this as productive or more productive uh, working remotely. So um, I think we have another question. Did we maybe want to throw that one up there, Karen? All right. Do you feel your organization has the right tools and systems to communicate and collaborate uh, in a post-COVID world? I think those where a lot of companies are falling short, but they're adapting as quickly as they can, right, to uh, adjust. Mm -hmm. I know we see that, right? Um, sure. Again, the first wave for everyone was communications, right? Connect your employees. And then that opened up security problems that they've tried to address. And a lot of infrastructure stuff got put on hold as they were, uh, again, just trying to get their arms around uh, how do we keep our business, number one, how do we survive in this pandemic? Um, what do we need to do? And it really kind of changed the IT landscape for a lot of businesses, right? Um, and many companies, uh, again, don't have the technical capabilities that they need across the board. And if you've got talented people, you know, they're getting solicited on LinkedIn every day for new jobs. And so um, it, it, again, made it even more challenging for people to just uh, function and get the tools necessary. And of course, then you've got uh, a lot of shortages around the world. When you talk about things like uh, desktops, right, and laptops, chip manufacturers uh, not able to produce. And so the, the wait times for things have become incredibly long and increased, which makes it more challenging, which then comes back to the, you know, kind of desktop as a service, right? Securing your information, encrypting it end to end, and making sure that no one can steal data from you, right? Um, again, because you've opened up all of these holes across an organization that never existed before. Uh, mm -hmm. And it makes people scramble, you know, and just to have a one cybersecurity expert on, on board for any 24 seven business, you know, you're looking at someone that's probably going to make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, and a lot of companies simply can't afford that. And so we've seen a lot of outsourcing to our stock as a service, uh, things of that nature, again, to help protect companies and their employees. And, you know, one of the ways to do it again, people want to bring their own devices, right? I, I you know, I recently met with a company that, you know, they were going to go buy 650 brand new Dell laptops. And I was talking to the CIO and he has to buy the most powerful machine that he can because he's buying for three years out. And the CapEx cost was incredible. Right. And not only that, but he couldn't get the machines. And, you know, here you can turn around in approximately 30 days and get set up to do desktop as a service and have all of your people able to get to the things that they need to. Right. Uh, and to provide their role and service within the organization. And so, uh, again, it comes down to tools, right? And, yep. and the ability to collaborate and do it. Yeah, when the, when the pandemic really, you know, really kind of got started um, in, you know, the March, you know, timeframe of last year, um, with Star to Star, a lot of our existing customers <clears throat> came to us and said, hey, we don't have remote workers or remote phones at the moment. Uh, we'd like to add that. So we did a lot of adding of those remote workers and, and soft phones and, and so on to existing systems. Um, the first quarter of this year, I think a lot of companies have finally come to the realization that, you know, we've kind of put this on hold long enough. Uh, it's time to actually get, you know, a system that's going to be, you know, allow us, uh, you know, our, our employees to be productive. Um, and in that aspect, 
you know, we've actually had a great first quarter um, from a sales standpoint. I can only relate to what's going on, you know, in our in our organization. But I think companies have finally said, look, we need to be prepared for the next situation that happens. I mean, this is not going to be the last time that there's going to be, you know, a, a situation where maybe employees need to push from, you know, and work from home. So it's been uh, it's been very interesting for us. I think there's a big upswing in in, in folks looking at, at doing these and making these decisions now. Um, and so uh, it's just an interesting time. So uh, was there another question, Karen? Was there one more question? You probably take this one, Todd. That's 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 really more from from your side. Sure, and I can tell you this is you know talk about you know things happening in the first quarter, Colin. I I've been so incredibly busy, and that was you know the a result of that was from the Solar Winds hack. Um, companies, very large organizations that were down uh, for days, right? And and again, the most sophisticated cyber attack of all time, right? And um, you know they were they were financially the disruption was significant, right? And they were doing whatever they could to secure their data, right, and protect it. And so um, I have seen, you know, incredible growth this past quarter. It was all driven by security initially, but then when we started to peel back the onion and chat with people, you know, we uncovered a lot of things uh, that drove uh, other things to, to help improve customer experience and employee experience, right? We ended up doing a lot of desktop as a service. Um, again, it was all about protecting the data and again, providing a, uh, you know, a, a seamless kind of customer experience and employee experience as well. And so, you know, this is something that's critical for everyone, right? Because ransomware is on the increase. It's not going to slow down or stop. The attacks become more and more sophisticated. And, you know, anything that you, you know, uh, consumer off the shelf software, right? They figure out how to attack that stuff in a, in a very quick time frame, right? And so you're always trying to stay one step ahead of the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the hackers, if you will, right? And so you need to, again, look at uh, all of your environment, um, you know, uh, who has access to it and how do you protect it? You know, clearly multi-factor authentication is very, very important, right? Um, and the ability to uh, prohibit people from downloading and taking data. And so, you know, again, this has been a big driver for us at this first part of the year, and I'm sure that's going to continue on. I don't know if anyone saw the 60 Minutes episode a couple of weekends ago on Sunday night uh, talking about the, the attack. And now we've got the Colonial Pipeline, right, which is uh, causing significant problems, driving fuel prices up. And it just proves the vulnerability across the board. And you don't have to be a large organization, right? We've seen small organizations that you know we tried to sell security to that didn't do it and then they end up getting hacked and they're trying to get thirty thousand forty thousand and quite honestly most of the people pay you know the city of atlanta is a customer of ours and you know they spent 20 million dollars trying to fix what happened because they wouldn't pay the ransom and most people quite honestly it's it's better just to pay it to get your data back and then you know uh, and then you know start to build the protection if you can be out in front of it much better but uh you know, clearly yep. this is something that's been a, a real big business driver for us. Yeah, I think that, you know, we, we, we've got similar situations with, with different customers and uh, had a customer out of Virginia, um, very, very large uh, organization, and they had a, a million dollar ransom and they and they uh, they paid it and they got their all of their data back. But now they're completely secured with all of that data, you know, on on our uh, Citrix platform, you know, desktop as a service and so on. So I think a lot of companies tend to think, well, it can never happen to me. I mean, we all kind of have that attitude mm -hmm. of, well, it's not going to happen to me, just as you mentioned, you know, some of the smaller companies, but you don't have to be a large company for these ransomwares, uh, you know, to happen and, and to be part of. In fact, there's probably a whole group of hackers that concentrate solely on small companies and, and figure that they can, you know, an easy marks or, or something along those lines. So a big part of what it is. So, uh, Karen, do we have any more questions or do we want to go to open questions? I think there was maybe a, a section where we're going to do some open questions before we wrapped up. Uh, yes, absolutely. There are no more poll questions at this time. Okay. Yeah, and so does anyone in the audience have questions? Yes, please submit those by clicking on the question mark icon on the left-hand side of your screen. And would so, you like me to read the question? Be, oh, go ahead. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, well, Todd, the first question there, uh, it says, since you've been doing extensive collaboration okay. over different platforms in general, how have you found the performance of each platform? Um, and so I can ahead, tell you this, you know, there are, again, you, you, you know, in the public cloud, right, you've got the world leader in, in AWS and you've got Azure and then you've got Google Cloud who has, uh, you know, Google Cloud platform that has a ton of money. 
and is certainly uh, you know making a dent into the market right now. But they all perform differently, and quite honestly, every application has a, a place where it performs best. And so, what we try to do in evaluating this and assessing someone's business and making recommendations is we give them unbiased expertise. And I'm very fortunate, you know, out of the approximately 8,000 employees, over half of our company are engineers. And so we have some absolutely brilliant people. And every day is a learning experience for me. Um, I was on yesterday, you know, again, multiple meetings all day long, but I was on with a Fortune 100 company uh, earlier in the day. And then I was on with a kind of what I would consider a medium business, about $100 million a year. And um, with similar problems and, um, you know, but the people that we had on addressing were so brilliant. I mean, just incredibly. And, you know, they're helping to solve problems. And so we do make recommendations based on the application, right? Um, is it a legacy application? You're trying to make cloud native. You know, what are, again, the desired outcomes that you're trying to achieve? And then we'll make recommendations based on our experience and expertise to help uh, again, select the right platform. Now, there have been issues, as everyone knows, Microsoft had issues with Office 365 a few weeks back. Um, AWS had some issues. Again, those things are going to happen. Um, but the good news is, you know, they've got geographic zones. You can be protected uh, and continue to, you know, to run your business. And so um, I don't have any favorites. I work with all of them. And it's really, again, about what is going to be best for the customer at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and with, with Star to Star kind of addressing that, that same question, you know, uh, multiple platforms, um, you have to be able to work with multiple platforms from a collaboration standpoint. Um, you know, do you federate with different chat services? Do you federate with, federate with different video platforms and so on? Uh, but even things, um, you know, like Microsoft Teams. Um, you know, Star to Star integrates fully with Microsoft Teams. And, you know, it's been a fairly new product for us, uh, but it's the fastest growing uh, product that we deliver today, which is where Star to Star is the voice engine uh, right underneath the Microsoft Teams. And so Teams is using all of their collaboration tools and Outlook and video and so on. And Star to Star is the voice engine, literally intercom calls between people on site or in multiple locations and all their phone calling, you know, worldwide. Uh, is on the Star to Star platform. So uh, as more and more platforms, you know, there's been a lot of consolidation in our industry. I mean, there's been a lot of companies, as I mentioned early on, you know, we were just purchased by a company called Sangoma. Uh, been a great, you know, uh, situation for Star to Star, but there's going to be much more, you know, uh, consolidation, um, you know, in our industry. Uh, you know, it's just getting to that point. Um, so looking at it uh, and understanding all these different platforms uh, is something that we work with every day. And there's no real magic bullet to it, right? I mean, you start working with Microsoft Teams and you get into it and, you know, best laid plans. I mean, we have similar to Todd's company, a, a huge percentage, I think about 40% of our organization are, are either uh, technical uh, or engineering. Uh, but we have a lot of folks to uh, make sure that when those problems happen, they're fixed and they're fixed, you know, quickly. So uh, it's, it's, it's electronics, it's communications. Uh, trust me, it's the internet. Uh, there's going to be problems, right? Um, so knowing that, you know, Rackspace and Star to Star, uh, you know, what do we do? How do we maintain it? How do we manage it? You know, one of the things that we do is we monitor and manage every single phone call that's going on on our network all the time uh, for degradation or issues or problems. And a lot of times we might be working on fixing those in the background. The customer might not even realize there's an issue or a problem, but we know there is. Um, so those are the types of levels, you know, really getting granular as far as how we, you know, deliver our service. So, um, you know, so who's your biggest competitor right now and what steps are you taking to stay ahead of them? Um, you know, answering that question from from a start to start standpoint um, kind of dovetails right off of my last you know question. There's obviously support, you know, development of tools. Um, we've probably introduced more products, you know, in the last six months than we've done uh, maybe in the last few years. Maybe that's because a lot of folks were cooped up, <laughs> you know, with COVID in their house, you know, banging on the computer and, and, and writing the code for all the new products that we have coming out. But I think a biggest part of it or one of the biggest part of it is being able to work with multiple different types of platforms, uh, being able to collaborate across multiple different platforms. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, Really, I don't know if anybody you know has brought this up to folks on on this call, but you know, I mean, the the regular what we call the PSTN, the public switch telephone network, uh, is basically going away. I mean, you can pull up any Google search. You know, AT and T is legis you know asking to be legislated out of existence. I mean, the regular phone lines that we were used to using um, are out there. In fact, seventy eight percent of the SMB is still on traditional POTS and what we call analog T one you know type service. 
that's all going away. So we've got a transition plan for all of those folks to be able to transition on to obviously, you know, uh, fiber and, and, and so on with our platform and everywhere from, you know, a hybrid solution where we're delivering some of the, you know, key system and PBX features and functionality at the, at the customer level. Uh, but everything is also done in the cloud. So we've got cloud and on-premise together, working together to give a good, you know, solution and a good experience for the customer. But um, I mean, Todd, what, what's Rackspace doing to stay ahead? Yeah, I wanted to share, uh, St you know, some thoughts for Steve there. So, you know, we, and, you know, this is going to be a little bold. We really don't have any competitors in, in the things that we do. However, I will say that I do compete against IBM, Accenture, Deloitte, but they don't have, you know, while they have hundreds of thousands of people, they come in and, you know, charge people a lot of money to give them a plan, right? We develop plans and roadmaps and then we implement them. And it, it's a big difference. And so, you know, we have a lot of competition, of course, across the board, right? There are smaller MSPs and, you know, a lot of times it comes down to money with people. But we are, uh, we are eons ahead of all of our competition. We, we launched something a couple of weeks ago called Elastic Engineering, the first in the world. And what we've done to really kind of revolutionize the cloud is, again, we have a lot of really smart people and we built these pods of engineering. And so, um, it, again, it could be around professional services for AWS, um, you know, refactoring your, your, uh, your applications to make them cloud native. And so we can help people do these really cool things. But the, again, the way we've designed this for elasticity, if you will, you're not signing a contract for a term of one to three years. You're buying hours on a monthly basis based on your needs, and that can go up and down, right? You may have some initial things that require, you know, a couple hundred hours a month, and then maybe it goes down to 20 or 40. But we're in there with your IT uh, departments, right? And we're building plans and roadmaps and, and really helping you to implement them effectively. And, we're, you know, we have deep benches of expertise. So we're never trying to take anyone's job. We're always trying to enhance the team that you have and the capabilities that organizations have. And I want to mention something for Eric here, talking about different platforms. You know, it's easy to be a cloud customer, right? I mean, quite honestly, you go to AWS, click, click, click. You give them a credit card. I'm an admin. The problem that people get into, and we're doing a lot of repatriation from public cloud to private cloud because cost gets out of control for people. Um, you know, again, because of that, and I'll just give you an example. AWS alone has over 40,000 SKUs now. They're introducing about 2,000, 1,800 to 2,000 new features annually. And you cannot keep up with that if you're not an expert. And, and we have over 1,000 experts at AWS. And so we're on top of those things. We're able to go in and help people optimize their environments for performance, but also for finance. We call it Optimizer Plus. And, and a lot of large organizations are really challenged with this, right? They have great ideas. They want to get to the cloud. They know that it's going to be better for their business in the long run, right? But all of a sudden, the spend gets out of control and their budget, you know, the CFO is freaking out because their spend is way, way out of control. And again, it's because it's so easy to do things, but you have to know all of the tricks of the trade. And that's why you need a company like Rackspace to help you with those things. Again, to provide that unbiased expertise and to, you know, we take people from where they're at and we take them to where they want to go. So I hope that gives you a little insight there. Um, you know, and our elastic engineering pods are phenomenal. They're groups of eight or nine people that are experts in what they're doing. And you work with the same pod the entire time. So they're not, they, they're familiar with your business. You're not changing people and having to, you know, tell them the story over and over. And so as you move through the journey, these pods are instituted to help you on that specific project and move through those things. All right. Elastic engineering. I'm sold. Yeah. So um, I, I guess if we don't have any more questions, um, Karen, did you want to maybe wrap up? I know we were going to run for about 45 minutes. We're a little bit over that, but. Uh... Yes, we can go ahead and wrap it up then. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining. The event has now concluded. You will receive an email regarding your lunch. We look forward to seeing you again. Have a great day.